Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ron Ruck Show. This is Antoinette, and tonight we have with us, while we're waiting for her call, um, Tammy Pepperman. So I'm excited, and I know that y'all will, once you see and, well, once you hear her, you will be excited also. So Tammy has... Tammy Pepperman has won the case against Congress for child trafficking and not child trafficking, Lord, human trafficking. And so without further ado, I believe we have her on the line. Hello, is this Tammy Pepperman? Hello. Sorry, I had my Hello, on. how are you, Miss Pepperman? Good, how are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm really looking forward to talking to you. I've been looking I, forward to it all week. Me too. Since our last, uh, since you were here with us last week. Well, and uh, since the time in August when Congress was evidence, we, we provided evidence of um, human trafficking. In November, the order went out for them being evidence to have been perpetrating genocide as well. Oh, my. So what, um, I understand that you won the case. Now, what exactly happens with that? Well, it's the original setup of the United States of America. Now, the United States of America itself was only a style. It, it included no land. It was being maintained by letters patent on the last name, which meant that they were taking humans, not land. And mm-hmm. the original contract was part of the Constitution. That original contract being with the Treasury that the House of Lords maintained, Congress had come in and signed that contract to protect humanity only to provide for humanity's general welfare and common defense. And that contract ended at Article 1, Section 9, Clause 3. And that clause says, No bill of attainder or ex post facto law shall be passed. That meant that was the end of the document. By 1777, Congress came in as the Confederacy and entered into an agreement with itself to use human beings as product, as to be human trafficking in Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation, wherein they charged and pledged us to discharge their bankrupt state. And so we provided all of this evidence to admit that they were human trafficking, and winning the case maintains that now the United States court, our court that we brought back into play in August, has now been formulated. Now, that court is also a bank. That's how their banks are set up. And yeah. right now, just now, been able to put the first deposits into that bank, which are the attorneys, the judges, the fictional characters, and the money is right now, just now, being created for that bank. And you can see that now in the stock market. The stock market just Mm -hmm. hit a record high this week of 1,600 points, or 16,000 points. So that's a good thing. Right, absolutely, because it's no longer the human being in um, play as the stock option, the backing of these stocks. And um, that's what you were uh, upon your birth certificate and... uh, uh, manufacturer statement of origin, which is a birth record, you were being deposited, you were the thing being held hostage, you were the thing being held in the holding corporation since 1933 when Congress went and declared bankruptcy again. They have switched everything around, and now you have a legal name, which means you're a corporation. You're not allowed to be a bank anymore because of the legal corporation name, and they just they raised all of humanity, and, and we've been able to bring that back to its origins and go after them on behalf of everybody across the globe. So that's good. Okay. Now, is this going to help with any of the people that are still 
trafficked out there? Absolutely. Uh, they were recently ordered that they're to be returned to their houses. If you'd like, I can read you the order right now. The oh, yes, order. I would love that. Thank you. <clears throat> so this order was handed out. Um, everybody was served by the, um, the November 14th, I think, was the last service records that were received mm-hmm. by the clerk of um, maintaining that they have been served. The order began, um, and I'll read who the defendants are, um, the United States Incorporated, the United States of America, the Food and Drug Administration, Free Bird, Free Bird Ethics Commission, or FICI, House of Representatives, United States Senate, Office of Population Affairs as the Department of Health and Human Services, Dr. Henry Kissinger, Broadcasting Board of Governors, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, U.S. Department of Education, Department of Transportation, State of Indiana, St. Joseph County, St. Joseph's Regional Medical Center, Trinity Health International, Andrew P. Stewart as Corporation Counsel, Association of Corporate Counsel, St. Joseph County Board of Commissioners, Michael P. Scopolitis, David C. Chaplow at the bank, Judith L. Fox, the assessor of real property, Philip P. Simon, Michael Bronicki, real property broker, Mike Chabot, real property broker, United States Postal Service, the National Science Foundation, U.S. Government Printing Office, Department of Energy, NIPSCO, and all other public utilities, also known as the K Trust, stemming from Massachusetts Land Trust through action of embezzlement. Clerk of St. Joseph County Superior Court, Harry Westlake. Clerk of United States District Court, Robert Chagovich. Department of Commerce, Patent and Trademark Office. The WIPO, or World Intellectual Property Association. CIA, Central Intelligence Agency. John O. Brennan, Director. International Psychoanalytical Association and the International Corrections and Prisons Association. The order begins. These matters having come before the United States Court on October 28, 2013 by joinder of parties, united, containing identical and concurrent jurisdictions stemming from criminal acts. This court is understood as evidenced and acknowledged by the U.S. Department of State, John Swartz Carey, Vice President of the, of the United States Incorporated, Joseph Biden, President of the Senate, United States of America, Senate and House of Representatives, Ed Perlmutter, House of Representatives, Central Intelligence Agency, Jim Hines, House of Representatives, John Borner, House of Representatives, and J. Rockefeller Senate, Department of Commerce, on behalf of the aforementioned defendants. Wherein, upon evidence of LIC or low intensity conflict operations, co conspirators via psychological warfare known as hearts and minds, by which the United States Incorporated is actively engaging in and promoting genocide through the Food and Drug Administration, also known as the FDA, maintaining contracts with the Friedberg Ethics Commission International, or FICI, by and through congressional action of the U.S. Senate and House of Representatives. 16 U.S.C. Chapter 7, and the Office of Population Affairs, otherwise known as the Department of Health and Human Services, established in 1975 by Dr. Henry Kissinger as a depopulation program, Memorandum 200 to the National Security Council, enabled through Act of Congress of the U.S. United States Senate and House of Representatives, entitled the 1947 National Security Act, which is 50, USC Chapter 15, further evidencing the use of hearts and minds as fourth generation warfare via the color of an illusion of decentralization, implication of long-term terrorism, and use of cultures, religious indoctrination, media manipulation through the Broadcasting Board of Governors, or BBG, maintaining international control of all civil media, lawfare, psychological warfare via political economic, social, and military pressure upon humankind. This schematic generating revenues in the criminal action of embezzlement from the Treasury through legal mechanisms to impart upon the human mind concepts 
wherein these vessels are constantly and consequently being altered of their heading. 46 U.S.C. Chapter 311 and 313, via advertising of monumental sort and consortium. The back-end insurance with, again, ill-gotten revenues from this criminal enterprise known as the Confederacy. From Black's Law Dictionary for Sedition, Confederacy. In criminal law, the association or banding together of two or more persons for the purpose of committing an act or furthering an enterprise which is forbidden by law, or which the lawful in itself becomes unlawful when made the object of the Confederacy. Conspiracy is a more technical term for this offense. The act of two or more who combine together to do any damage or injury to another or to do any unlawful act. Stemming from three variations of law, one, meta, which is morality, two, soma, which is psychology, and three, data, which is ethics, the human being, special deposit, has been converted into another resource and therein altered of its condition through action of shipping, bottom rate, diagnosis, and repair, otherwise known as commerce and navigation mechanized by patent and trademark through venues such as WIPO, which is the World Intellectual Property Association, whereby these vessels are reported injured via intelligence provided to the House of Lords through address of clergy by which to appropriate monies from the Treasury upon fraudulent claim as injury is maintained by congressional direction and action upon humankind within aforementioned criminal enterprise. Victims henceforth forced through compulsion and maintain those concepts, otherwise known as conceit, or the action of moving, navigating, conveying, giving, granting, assigning, holding, keeping, maintaining and transporting vessels, alteration of heading through action of psychiatry via psychological artificial intelligence, design created by the production company called the CIA or the Central Intelligence Agency and broadcast globally through the Broadcasting Board of Governors, as maintained by the Council on Foreign Relations, including but not limited to the productions espoused to the House of Lords by which to fraudulently embezzle monies out of the Treasury for the sole purpose of promoting, acting upon, and engaging in genocide against the human race. Whereby, through the codification maintained as the International Statistical Classification of Diseases and Related Health Problems, currently known as the ICD-10, these vessels are then being repaired due to the injury imposed upon them by the aforementioned Confederacy in Action, which is the 113th, Con 113th Congress assembled. Marine insurance, stemming from the original charters, formed by the underwriters subscribing to the psychological construct, color, illusion, or guise of known as law, the Emergency Management, or FEMA, 6, USC, Chapter 1, Subsection 5, sorry, Subchapter 5, Subsection 313, through patent, trademark, and intellectual property, otherwise known as concept, otherwise known as conceit, or the action of moving, navigating and transporting vessels, alteration of heading through action of psychiatry via psychological design. The United States of America by act of Congress, the United States Incorporated, and criminal enterprise known as Confederacy, League, Association of Nations or International, United Nations, and other known conspirators having knowledge and a forethought continues with intent to perpetrate genocide of the human race as psychopaths, bankrupt, depraved, and without honor divesting liberty a franchise only granted within honors. Whereby the United States of America, by action of Congress, the United States Incorporated and criminal enterprise known as Confederacy, Association of Nations, International, United Nations, and other co-conspirators with knowledge and a forethought and acting with intent to perpetrate genocide of the human race has forfeited the treasury to the United States of being, I am the human race. These monies shall be deposited into the United States Bank 
Incorporated by Original Charter and Declaration of Trust, Record Number 1239990, located at St. Joseph County, Indiana, which is otherwise known as Docket Entry Number 1. The United States Bank, having succeeded all others on January 25, 2013, without argument, counterclaim, or otherwise of any authority, representative, agent, or other on behalf of defendants, listed, or co-conspirators, otherwise known as docket entry number one. The United States of America, as actions of Congress, the United States Incorporated and criminal enterprise known as Confederacy, League, Association of Nations, or International, the United Nations, and other known conspirators are without immunity or sovereignty as per 28 U.S.C. Chapter 97, the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act, and the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity, and shall not be protected under penalty of death, aiding and abetting the enemy of humankind. All human children shall be immediately returned to their houses. Human beings shall be determined by virtue of being. Psychopathy shall not be protected. Psychopathy is a predator of humankind. Psychopathy shall be capitalized by its chosen form of government as per the Atlantic Charter of 1941. The United States of Being, otherwise known as humanity, shall never more be capitalized. Any lost, orphaned, or otherwise child in need shall be protected by the Treasury and removed from congressional grasp, holding, institution, prison, hospital, warehouse, and or deposit corporation immediately to be kept, held, and protected by the United States attempting first to return said children to their places or houses of origin. There shall be in place a permanent injunction and restraint upon all criminal actors wherein all known psychopaths shall remain 100 miles away from human life, penalty of death for violation. North Korea, also known as a project and design, Pyongyang of Congressional Action and Intelligence, shall house and maintain psychopaths observing birth control and sterilization procedures already conceptualized, agreed upon, and consented to by the criminal enterprise. If one psychopath should kill another psychopath, it shall be considered abortion as conceptualized, agreed upon, and consented to by aforementioned psychopaths as psychopathy is without sentience or ability to exist separate from a host body, politic, or franchise state as evidenced by its work in action. Psychopathy is not to be confused with life or be living and shall be directed by current policy, seen, die, determined upon market conditions of aforementioned civilly dead, surety, natural persons, uses, usufruct, taxes, Turn, fees, charges, black and white acres, stock options, commercial units, consumptive goods, as well as any other entitlement by which they subscribe as defined under the laws of infants, mortgage, copy hold, commerce, and navigation. As per law and custom, the capacity of the use of fraud shall not be diminished. Psychopaths shall be administered by the FDA Ethics Commission. The recommendations of the revised World Medical Association's Declaration of Health Safety, the directives and guidelines of the European Union, and the regulations of the United States Food and Drug Administration, otherwise known as the FDA, as maintained by Rules of Procedure 2006 Current Edition. These resources, also known as test subjects, shall uphold the current trade agreements of Korea and the United States Incorporated with all remaining revenue minus 90% to be used for the care and maintenance of aforementioned psychopaths as originally conceptualized by Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation without change. Institutions formerly known as warehouse facility under the control or discretion of the Department of Education shall be obliterated, dissolved, and replaced with deprogramming facilities for the express benefit of humankind. Psychopaths shall be charged as fees to cover this and related expenditures via the Bretton Woods Agreement and structure of the International Monetary Fund. Deprogramming facilities shall not use the Delphi technique, Alinsky method, consensus creation, 
or any other psychological warfare upon humankind. Deprogramming as evidenced by the United States of being in action, evidence that this shall take no more than two years to complete and shall include metaphysics, theometaphor, or knowledge, knowledge of the self as a supportive structure disallowing cognitive dissonance. Quotas maintained through the IMF as to special drawing rights shall allow for the whole without compartmentalization regard to age, a legal construct, or any other concept by which to move human being away from or otherwise outside of the self. This is also known as exodus. Whereas this confederacy in action has applied fourth generation warfare upon humankind by which to force unsuspecting subscribers or underwriters to be the guarantee insurance in a perpetual game of confidence as defined by 27 CFR 72.11 since the original charters. The act of surrender of the Great Charter of New England to His Majesty June 7, 1635. The Articles of Confederation of the United Colonies of New England, May 19, 1643. Charter for the Province of Pennsylvania, February 28, 1681. Charter Charter of Acadia, granted by Henry IV of France to Pierre de Gaulle, Pierre de Mont, December 18, 1603. Charter of Carolina, March 24, 1663. Charter of Carolina, June 30, 1665. Charter of Connecticut, April 23, 1662. Charter of Maryland, June 20, 1632. Charter of Massachusetts Bay, March 4, 1629. Charter of Massachusetts Bay, October 7, 1691. Charter of New England, November 3, 1620. Charter of Privileges with the service Adolphus as graciously, graciously given by letters patent to the newly established Swedish South Company, June 14, 1626. Charter of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, July 15, 1663. Charter of the Colony of New Plymouth, granted to William Bradford and his associates, 1629. Charter of the Dutch West India Company, June 3, 1621. The Charter of Fundamental Laws, or West New Jersey, agreed upon in 1676. First Charter of Virginia, April 10, 1606. General Charter for those who discover any new passages, havens, countries, or places, March 27, 1614. Penn's Charter of Liberty, April 25, 1682. Petition for a Charter of New England by the Northern Company of Adventurers, March 3, 1619 to 1620. The Second Charter of Virginia, May 23, 1609. The Third Charter of Virginia, March 12, 1611. Charter of Liberties or the Coronation Charter, 1100. The Gownhausen Charter, 1180. Confirmation of Charter, 1297. Charter to Sir Walter Raleigh, 1584. Letters patent to Sir Humphrey Gilbert, 1588, the dialogue concerning the Exchequer, 1180, and all and every of them a production and discourse, altering the heading of these vessels, the United States of Being and Rem, at all libertas, otherwise known as I am. Wherein these playwrights, scribes, have continually, continually maintained on their house, known as marquee, defined as one, a large tent, often with open sides, used chiefly for outdoor entertainment. Two, a roof-like structure, often bearing a signboard, projecting over an entrance, entrance as to a theater or hotel, also called marquee. Providing that with transgression, literally, literally translated as Congress, under style or chain of events via congressional action, Humanity, through trick and deception, has been subject of a grand illusion, color, guise of a psychological construct known as law, language, culture, religious indoctrination, and various concepts by which to be altered of their original heading being as evidenced by Council of Confederacy in Action on November 21, 2012, and henceforth where an Andrew P. Stewart Corporate Counsel from the Association of Corporate Counsel acknowledges and further maintains indeed and in silence while anticipating fourth generation warfare evidenced by his works and actions and that of his co-conspirators, including but not limited to David C. David Chaplow, Nipsco, and any and all of them participating 
as evidenced by their work. In a briefing paper to the Department of State written in 1996 as the first working paper, GS01 of the Yale Program of Genocide Studies, Gregory H. Jansen defines genocide as, quote, in the present convention, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group as such, A, killing members of the group, B, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, C, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, D, imposing measures intended to prevent birth within the group, and E, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. Wherefore, defendants, known by their works in action and upon contract of fee schedule, shall be measured by their works in action as per fee schedule record number 1237493, located at St. Joseph County, Indiana, USDC 313CB052, which is also known as docket entry number one. Did I lose you? A lot of reading. I'm sorry. I had myself on mute so that I wouldn't disturb you. Is this in all states or is it just in Indiana? No, it's in all states. The record was actually maintained in, and evidenced in Indiana, but it applies to all states. Um, yesterday we issued a warrant out of the United States court for the first time since we have been established as the court and bank and that's being facilitated as we speak, but it's being facilitated in another state. We have general jurisdiction because when we came in, um, their judges were actually attempting to represent us as if they were our attorney, and that was part mm -hmm. of the order. Because that, that means automatically, because they came in as attorney in fact, they got hit with trouble damages because during right. the process, they were harming us and pretending to be our representatives at the same time, which is the same thing that Congress is doing. Right, which is so against the law. Right, absolutely. Against the Constitution. Yeah. Yes. Well, against so, the original contract. Pardon me? Against the original contract, because that Constitution, after Article 1, Section 9, Clause 3, they continued mm -hmm. writing up their own laws, but they, that, that was never part of the Constitution. That was just yeah, so that's a good thing. No. It's a good thing that that's going to be stopped now. Absolutely, because what we had done is last year, while we were evidencing this, um, every human being is to be on general welfare, not social welfare, general welfare. And that, that was the yeah. original contract, that if the corporations were allowed to do business here, they were going to be paying taxes so that human beings would be protected Human beings would be maintained on general welfare. Human beings are not product. They're not to be treated like farm animals. And they had uh, contracted with the Treasury in order to do that, and that was Article 1, Section 8, Clauses 1 and 2. And they immediately came in with the Articles of Confederation before the ink was even dry on that thing and went to the side and started embezzling out of the House of Lords, the Treasury itself. Yes. So is this applying to all of the ABC groups that are, you know, incorporating, you know, CPS and... Um, um, I'm not familiar with the ABC groups. Okay. Um, Child Protective Services. Oh, yeah. Um, FBI all, and... Right. They've all been shut down, and, and I don't know if you've noticed, but last year, um, this case went on for almost a year, and, um, mm -hmm. well, this... Here. It was here in March, and um, we came in and evidence that instead of protecting me as a protected class, because I came in as a female, um, they were preying on me. So the minute they started preying on me, and we have evidence that they're preying on me and not protecting me, then we notified the International Monetary Fund and said, look, they're drawing special drawing rights out of the fund. They're not using them to protect females. Here's the evidence and they were cut off from their special drawing rights as of March 8th. Now, since that time, they've been advertising for private donations to cover their chemtrailing, 
cloud seed program, child protective mm -hmm. services. Now we're down to where they're asking for private donations to cover their public school system. They have been completely cut off from the Treasury and the International Monetary Fund, and right now they're just running on fumes. Yes, because I know um, the United States is no longer the president of the um, the World Bank. Am right, I correct? In a cap. Right. They gave up all of uh, during this time. We were telling them, "Are you, okay? This if you do this, this is human trafficking. You might not want to do that." Mm -hmm. Well, then they would come back around and they do it anyway. But the yeah. foundation of of actually evidencing a crime, you have to prove that they had intent to commit the crime. So first we'd open up and we'd say, okay, this is the criminal act. You can act on it or you can stop there. Well, they kept continuing forward and perpetrating the criminal act on record. And that's what happened in August. Uh, the USDC court judge, uh, uh, Simon, Philip Simon, he came in and, and on record he said there's a proper way and an improper way of human trafficking, which gave the whole, the, the, blew the whole system apart because he came in and admitted that they were human trafficking, but under legal implication or an attorney says so, it's okay to human traffic that way, not that way, which is a joke. All we wanted was for him to get pissed off enough, tell us, you know, look, I am human trafficking. I don't give a shit what you say, whatever. But he actually entered that into a court order and said that there's a proper way and an improper way to human traffic. But as you know, both ways are unlawful on their faces. So you are not yeah. going to human trafficking. And um, even his actions, we had already maintained the, the agreed entry with Northern Holding Corporation back in May. And Northern Holdings took the deal. We said, look, you have immunity at this point in time, only this point in time, because you didn't know that you were human trafficking. You didn't know that you were holding human beings as negotiable instruments in the holding corporation as per the 1929 Geneva Convention. So we're going to let you be immune, but only for this moment in time. If you do not start holding the attorney in the holding corporation or the other fictions in the holding corporation, then you don't yeah. have any immunity. You know, and so um, they entered into a lead entry with us back in May. Well, that's good. So do you think that this is going to help with them spraying with the chemtrails, the GMOs it, and it, the food, since you're going after them for the genocide also? Right, and, and that's what, part of what was stopped, because all of that time they were going to the federal government on development grants. So everybody sees, like, Monsanto, and they think that Monsanto is horrifying. Monsanto was being paid by the federal government or Confederacy to go into other countries and develop those countries on their behalf. And so we were all seeing Monsanto, but it's not Monsanto. It was funded by Congress, part of the action of genocide, because these GMOs are killing us. Their food bag is yeah. killing us. If you go to the Codex Alimentarius right now that maintains everybody's seed bag, You'll find all sorts of garbage they're putting in our food, and including how they take babies away from young mothers. Yeah. So that's on the states that they're allowing inside of food um, sodium benzoate, potassium benzoate, calcium benzoate. Now, when you ingest those items, benzoate, you are metabolizing um, benzodiazepine, which is Valium and Xanax. So say you're just now having a baby, oh, no. you're going to positive to those things. You know, all so of they're putting that to the babies as infants? Um, excuse me for talking over you. That's going well, into the babies as infants? Absolutely. It's going into you. It's going into mothers. They put those things in hot classes, in condiments, in juice, fruit drinks, as a preservative. They put it in all of the foods, bread, juices, canned goods, all of those things. You are ingesting, and that's and you've noticed it. I mean, that's why everybody's so sleepy. They they can't hear us. Um, they're fuzzy minded. They can't. Uh, they're not able to research. They're not able to function on their own. So they're requiring that attorney to speak on their behalf. They're requiring the government to speak on their behalf. It's because their government has them completely doped up. That's what you're ingesting when you're when you're eating a loaf of bread from Walmart. When you're eating um, mm. from Walmart or 
or any of these corporate corporations without looking at those labels, that is mm-hmm. caused so much pain. They've got everybody doped up on, on uh, benzodiazepines. And, and that product is known as Valium and Xanax and different concentrations where the, the farthest end, if you're consuming, um, you know, a, a case of Pepsi a day, you're actually metabolizing into the realms of such as Rohypnol. So you've got yourself in a carb coma to the extent that, you know, you're, you're basically consuming what, what equates to the gate rape drug. That's why you're forgetful. That's why you're sluggish. That's why you can't do anything about this. That's why you don't want to stand up and you feel like you can't do anything. It's because you're eating what they tell you to eat. Yes, and then on top of with the Pepsi, which most people know, well, not most people, some people know, that Pepsi has baby fetuses in it, aborted fetuses. Absolutely. You know that. And it's, it's biological warfare because when you're um, ingesting lipids and, and very strong protein, what you're doing is you're altering your um, ability to metabolize other things. Um, it, it's causing excessive cell growth. Um, things like that. You need to study the influence of these lipids and um, amino acids on the RNA itself. So you've got, you know, when you're ingesting uh, various proteins such as uh, aborted fetus cells, that is forcing your body to do other things that you don't really want it to do because you're you're looking at your, your cells. The RNA is what's communicating with the rest of your body. So, um for example, you, you eat a certain lipid uh, preceding a lactose uh, molecule or a molecular, molecular structure. So what mm-hmm. that is is during the lactose phase, that's when you're making insulin, for example, to get rid of that lactose, to burn it off. Now, if you consume lactose all by itself, which is in the uh, pasteurized milk, your body's not able to digest that. Yeah, you know, so that's there, a good reason why they made it illegal. Right, and and on top of that, they they've done the same thing with the GMO corn. Uh, corn right now is is mainly lactose, but you cannot yeah. digest them. You have that preceding protein, lipid, or amino acid, and they know these things. That is biological warfare being employed upon us at any given moment in time, because they're actually making the RNA of our cells create new cells or do whatever you know. It depends on what the, the, the lipid is saying for it to do, but there should not be um, extra lipids and amino acids in any food product designed and, and advertised as a sugary drink, for example. I mean, that's just, that, that boggles my mind that they would even attempt that. And then for the citizens to just lay down and accept it and continue purchasing those things is, is just foul. I mean, I can't believe that anybody would ever even consider um, going near a store, they even sold Pepsi products after that was made known to the public. Yeah, but, you know, a lot of people, you know, they say that they didn't see it or they didn't hear it, and when you tell them that, then, you know, of course, you know, as with anything, people don't want to hear it. You right. know, that's not true, and don't tell me I'm eating or I'm drinking, and a, you know, a baby. Right. And, and they, no, don't. they and that, wouldn't do that to this. They wouldn't do that to us. Right. But that's part of the structure because a lot of people cannot, they can't conceptualize that they're actually being preyed upon by their government. And the government relies on the psychological uh, maintenance by cognitive dissonance whereby they're going to say, well, that can't happen in my country. Somebody will come along and protect me. My president really loves me. One of these days he's going to stop this stuff. You know what I mean? They're they're always hoping yeah. that their government will come in and save them at some point in time. When in reality, it's the government that is preying on them and using them under the action of genocide. Yes, and has been for a long time. You know, and you know this. You know, not just with this present present president, but you know, with the ones prior to him. Absolutely, you know, this I mean, has been going on for a long, long time since the early 60s when they started with the first vaccinations. Well, not the first vaccinations, but, you know, the ones where you got on your arm where, you know, it left the mark that 
you know, a lot of us still can see today. Well, you know, and that's they... something that will kick you off, too, because smallpox, when you go into the study and relationship of bubonic plague, smallpox, um, these new swine flu derivatives and all of these things, they call it H1N1 and H1N5 because that's what your body's producing as it metabolizes. One part hydrogen, five parts ox- or um, five parts nitrogen. Okay, when you go look at the composition that makes your body do that, it's actually anthrax. And what had happened is they had extreme failure because up to the 70s, they were dosing the human populace in the United States Incorporated with the anthrax virus. They said it was because they were looking for a cure or looking for a vaccine or whatever else. But what they had ended up doing by their sneaky tactics is making everybody born before the 70s immune to anthrax. And so they didn't have the death rate that they wanted this time. But when you go Mm -hmm. back all the time to the black plague and bubonic plague and smallpox and everything else, all of those are derivations on anthrax exposure since they found it first in sheep carcasses, you know, during the medieval medieval period. Yes. Always now, the um, government controlling the, the sheeple. Now, how is this going to help? How is this going to be enforced? It already is. You, you know, to keep the them name. from the human trafficking and from the genocide that they're putting on we the people. Right. Well, we're not we the people. The people were defining the 14th Amendment as being Congress, as being the corporation. And that's what mm-hmm. the, the whole joke was that uh, President Lincoln maintained. Now, Lincoln was a credit reporter for Dun & Bradstreet. He was also an attorney. He was not the good guy. Three days before right. the 14th Amendment was signed into play, he did the Expatriation Act. That had nothing to do with slaves being able to expatriate. That allowed the attorney to expatriate as being a citizen and under the rule of thumb, attorney could then turn around and pledge allegiance to the bar, to the British Accreditation Registry. What that did during the 14th Amendment is where the surety was created. So at that time, you, the human being, you, the, the natural human, will be defined as the surety. You're, you're the monetary uh, denomination. That's where they entered you into the whole schematic of banking. So you started being tricked out. You were declared natural person, which means you're dead. That means that you're civilly dead. And at right. that time, you don't have any rights. You, and then, um, you know, under the doctrine of election, it says you're electing either a right or a benefit. You're never both. And from that point on, you have never been the heir. They have come in on interpleading action, and here, I'll take it before you get it. And that's what the use of Child Protective Services is. That's what adult protection is. That's what probate court is. That's what family court is, is the action of interpleading in between you and your inheritance. And they get that before your children can get their inheritance from you. They're going to be snaked off to you and put somewhere else. That was an entire schematic to get at those estates that they took over in the 1600s. When, when they came in and said they seceded from England, secession means mm-hmm. to take over the state. It doesn't mean you're coming away from somewhere. It means that they were taking yeah. over the states at that time. Okay, well, I would just be glad when they finally put down their weaponry and they stopped letting these ABC groups have so much control because they're not listening. You know, it doesn't seem as if they are. Yeah, because now, and that was one of the orders back in August is that now the – Fictional creations are the surety. And what's happened is, um, and I know it's, it's probably new for a lot of our new listeners, but because yes. uh, you were the surety prior to August, okay, the human mm-hmm. being was the surety. In August, yes. um, we we went back to the Sister KVI Act itself, and we said, okay, I came into court here, and I asked a judge to be there. Now, when I was in court and I was going through all of this trauma and terrorization and everything that everybody else gets to go through, I had asked specific questions and I came upon a motion at one point and that judge came in as an attorney in a black dress. It was not a judge bound by judicial canons. 
So eventually, right. by the time we set up the, the court, then that was what was able to occur in August. Is that We said, hey, we've been looking for this guy for a long time. He's been lost at sea, and we couldn't find him. So we have no other option than to declare him dead, according to the Sessicuvi Act, also maintained as 38 U.S.C. 108. And we sent that off to the Secretary of State, which is the clearinghouse for bankruptcy. That is what the clearinghouse does. It, it uh, clears the book. And so once we did that, they have now been putting the attorney, banker, uh, bank itself, the judges, everybody else in the holding corporation. They are now being charged when before they couldn't be charged. Only the sureties of state can be charged with crime. And the reason uh, that they were that they have such um, stupid bar guidelines and everything like this, the bar would come in and present to show all the time. So if you went after your attorney and you said, oh, my God, my attorney just abused me and everything else, you could go to court and you could sanction that attorney. But that attorney was never criminally charged until August. And now if you look in the mainstream media, there's an attorney now charged with uh, serial bank robbery. There's one charged yes. with robbing the gas station last week. Uh, there's a judge charged with uh, uh, mailing narcotics through the, through the mail. They said that he was a drug dealer or she was a drug dealer. And now they're mm-hmm. coming in and attorneys because the attorney is now the surety. It's no longer the human being. Yeah, well, we have a lot of politicians lately. If you've noticed that, it seems like they're getting charged with a lot of drug charges. Absolutely, yeah. and they're pleading guilty, which is the action of what an attorney is. Now, before this, um, and, and that's the snake in the garden, by the way, the metaphor. An attorney yeah. would come up to you and say, well, I have an easier way for you, honey. Come on over here to our side. Well, that attorney mm-hmm. would reach you. And what happens if you get a summons in the mail and say you open the summons, and, and we're not saying to open the summons, I'll talk about that in a little bit, but... First of all, you can only summon the dead. So all the way back to 1666, you are presumed lost at sea or dead because you've never actually presented yourself as the living. So the minute that you get a summon in the mail and you answer that, you are overcoming mm-hmm. the presumption that you're lost at sea and you're saying, yes, I'm dead. Well, they also, through trick and deception, have maintained what is known as a mort badge or a mortgage. You know it is a house mortgage. But a mortgage... Yeah, that's a, that, a death notice. A death right. payment, and, like. Yeah, it's a dead pledge. So at that mm-hmm. point, I'm coming in, overcoming the presumption that you're lost at sea and saying, okay, I'm dead. And they were yeah. tricking and tricking everybody into providing evidence of their death. And that's why we came in on this case and we said no. That's through trick and deception. Look here, in the mortgage itself, there's a borrower's covenant saying that you are giving your body over to this bank. That's what the borrower's covenant says. You're giving your body over to the bank, and you're going to, you're taking an oath to defend the title of that body. Now, what's the title? That's what your last name is. They have a letter patent on the last name. That's the patent on the last name. They have a patent on you if you call yourself a girl or a boy or a male or a female, they have patents on your diagnosis if you say I'm sick or if you say I'm bipolar or schizophrenic mm-hmm. or um, any other diagnosis, they have a patent on those titles. That's your title if you accept it. And that's why Jesus now, was so adamant about dropping all of those things. Divest yourself of all that possesses you. What is the purpose of the patent on your last name and on your gender? Well, what happens is the letters patent said that you can go out and find anything new. Okay, you cannot, if, if there was a patent on the ground, there's only one patent going to exist on the ground because the ground never changes. So they came mm-hmm. up with a skin. They said, okay, and it, it would be like you and I. If we were explorers, say you and I went up into the mountains and we found a new species of squirrel, okay? If we found yeah. a new species of squirrel, we would do like a scientist and say, well, the nomenclature, I'm going to call it this genus and this family name or phylum, and then I'm going to call it a boy or a girl, right? 
but that becomes yeah. my animal because I found that animal. And then I named that animal. And so that's where the letters patent stem from. They said, well, we're going to go out and we're going to find new beings, okay? So what they've done is they went out and they found new beings, new, new lands, which are human beings. And they said, well, yeah. that one over there, that one is a blacksmith. So his last name is going to be Smith. Well, that, that thing over there, that's Eric's son. So we're going to name that thing Erickson. And that thing's from Champagne, France. So we're going to name that thing Champagne. And we're going to name that thing Smith because it's a silversmith. And it describes what a human being can do and separated it from the one or the overall by that um, genus phylum and the classification mechanism known as nomenclature. So, Tammy, now, you know, they have diseases that are named after these, you know, scientists or, you know, whoever came up with the name of them. So is that the reason for that? You know, um, they found a new thing. Um, They put a patent on it. And, And what you have to realize is that these new things are just different variations from the first. Like, um, originally, they were dosing people with such concentrated forms of anthrax that it would cause um, black marks on the skin as it expanded. Uh, anthrax is a, um, like a mushroom. It's a sporous bacterium. So it yeah. would expand the skin like a mushroom does. And so the black plague was, was what you were seeing, uh, what happens to the skin when you have a mushroom growing in it, basically, or the sporous bacterium. Well, then you could uh, use less of a concentration of anthrax and come up with H1N5 because it's so, um, it can lay dormant for up to, what, 90 days, I believe. And so you can carry it back, back and forth, back and forth. But like I said, the downfall was using it prior to the 1970s. By the time this, uh, the new generations are um, occurring and people are having children, they're developing immunity to these things. And so they, they were trying to be more aggressive um, back in 2009, 2010, um, when Jeff and I were teaching this, and I ended up showing Jeff that year in 2010 in August um, because we were teaching this. But at that time, right around that time, as we were teaching, hey, look, this is what H1N1 is. This is what the swine flu is. Here's our evidence. Here's our research, everything else. Well, what they had done is they stopped playing around with the name swine flu, and they started yeah. saying, well, oh, goodness, there's a cat out here in California with bubonic plague, and now there's somebody in the U.K. with the black plague. And so at that time we came in and we said, no, you're not going to play that game either. This is anthrax. You're not going to dose them with anthrax. And so it stopped and it went away until now recently they've come up with H1N5 now. But again, it's the same thing. It's just a different concentration of anthrax. Now, let me ask you if you know. Last night, Dr. Carly was on, and she didn't get a chance to complete what she was saying. That they're spraying, they're spraying things that is giving people like the rabies, you know, which is making the zombie image. image. Right, and that's you know also, uh, well, a lot of that is messing with the electrolytes. If you, um, okay, first of all, you've got a constant concentration now in public city waters um, that mm-hmm. is such a high concentration of chlorine. Well, chlorine is a calcium salt. You've heard about bath salts driving people crazy. When you yeah. see the amount of chlorine, you've got so much chlorine in the water, and these people are drinking it by the gallons per day, chlorinated water, then they're salting their food with all of this uh, pseudo salt that, are, that is manufactured in, in India, the NCL plant, and again, it's another calcium salt. You're loading up a population on bath salts, you're just calling it something else. When you look at the levels of chlorine in soda and in uh, other things that use city water, uh, beers now, there's all sorts of things mm-hmm. with the chlorine derivatives in it. You're just upping your dosage of those bath salts, and eventually it will just fry your brain. You can't function anymore. You've got oh, to so... start. Everybody needs to de- uh, detox. 
you know, every day, um, usually every day I'll take uh, bentonite. I, I do bentonite um, iodine to flush out the, the radioactive properties in this food. Uh, bentonite mm-hmm. is awesome at pulling and chelating things that are poisoning you, and it's really not that expensive. The face mask that they sell is the exact same thing they sell as the liquid in the bottle. Um, you know, and, and um, everybody needs to research these things and find out how to detox yeah. and get this crap out of you so that you'll feel better. Yeah. So does the um, silver, um, okay, and I want to make sure I say this. Co- collateral. Is it collateral? Thank you. Yeah. Does that collateral. really work? Yes, because, you know, you hear so much promotion of it. Oh, it's just amazing. Um, you know, when we get the sniffles or whatever, that's the first thing I go to. And it usually will take a, a bacteria um, within the, a couple of days. And that's all I ever take. You know, I'll take a probiotic if I'm feeling really, really yucky. But other than that, um, we use uh, colloidal silver for stick. And, and we make sure, you know, the first thing is filtering that water. You've got to start filtering the water and it doesn't. You can make your own filters. You can make your own carbon filters. You can make your own uh, sand filters, rock them, whatever you need to do. Get it done. Start filtering your water and getting that crap out of your body so that you can actually think again because it's so hard in this society with everything that's in the food and water to, to just be human. They're poisoning us. And, and you can see the evidence of the body um, adapting throughout time by what's in the body at this time versus what was likely in the body way back when. Because everything that you have inside of you, every organ, including the majority of your skin, is, in, is a filtration system. If we were in the environment we're supposed to be in, we wouldn't be full of filtration ability because we wouldn't be being poisoned. The, the consistency of our body in this day and age suggests that we have been poisoned for a very long time and that we are adapting to those poisons upon us. Yes. Um, yeah, because it is. It's so much poisons in the air and then what they're spraying and what they're putting in the food, what they're putting in the water. And so no matter which way we go, we're being poisoned. Absolutely. And, and then do the medications, then it's... You know, pharmaceutically, they're poisoning. Absolutely, and and that's what those uh, trade agreements are with the FDA and the Ethics Commission. And you can go right to Freebird, Freebird Ethics Commission, which is the Freebird Ethics Commission International, known as FECI, F-E-C-I, and you can go read their uh, rules and procedures of 2006, which is the most current with the FDA, they have contracts to use you and I, the human being, as human test subjects. That's what our title is, according to the FDA, is a human test oh, subject. Oh, so they're saying that we're, we're test subjects. Absolutely. So that they can just do whatever they want to do with us, and it's, so they found a way to make that legal. Absolutely, and only the, by agreement of themselves, and that's what they were evidenced to be doing. That is the perpetration of genocide. That contract itself is the evidence that they are perpetrating genocide against us. If you give me a minute and, and fill in, I'll pull it up real quick and read you part of it. Okay, thank you. Sister Agonia? Yes, I'm here. Yes, um, this is really fascinating information, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. Wow, it just seems like the more we think that we we know, the more we're finding out how deeper it goes. Absolutely. Well, and, and they've tried to separate us. They've told us that boys are bad and girls are bad and black is bad, and brown is bad, and white is bad, and red is bad, and this religion is bad, and this culture is bad. And that's the purpose. Their whole purpose was to divide and conquer so that they could perpetrate genocide against all of us while everybody was looking the other way. And they, they have the, the most horrifying criminal enterprise ever known. That is, their function is to perpetrate genocide against us. Now, from the Ethics Commission and the FDA, rules the procedure of the Freeburg Ethics Commission International Fiji Revised Version 2006. 
the preamble. <clears throat> the Freeburg Ethics Commission International, or FEC, was founded in 1980 and is oriented on the United States Review Board. Since its inception, PG has reviewed and provided expert opinions for clinical studies using human test subjects. After more than 25 years of existence, the PT has achieved a national and international reputation for professionalism. So they have they get awards for being professional about how to use the human test subject. Does that make you feel warm and fuzzy? No, it doesn't. Now I'll continue mm -hmm. reading. The expert opinion prepared for a clinical study is based on the current editions of the recommendations of the revised World Medical Association's Declaration of Health Safety, the directives, the guidelines of the European Union, and the regulations. Yeah. Now, the, the regulations of the United States Food and Drug Administration, that means that they're the law, legal authority. Additionally, the current laws and regulations in Germany and all other countries in which the clinical study is to be conducted are also an inherent part of this basis. But everything is ruled and governed by the United States. They are perpetrating genocide in Japan, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, China, Europe, Asia, France, Spain, the United States, Canada everywhere, and this is all funded and backed by the United States Congress, the Senate and the House of Representatives, using human beings as human test subjects by which to generate revenue into their pockets. And you can see that the diagnosis structure runs right through the CMS system, which is the Centers for Medicaid Services, through the International yeah. Classification of Diseases and Disorders, or the ICD-10. You can find those at um, the World Health Organization. It's all the same thing. Henry Kissinger came in in 1974 with his Memorandum 200 to the National Security Council and said depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign policy. So at that time, he had directed that depopulation be the highest priority globally. And that was also put on evidence because that in their hand. They're saying, well, we're going to start depopulating. And the mechanism that they used to do that was through the Office of Population Affairs, which Henry Kissinger founded in 1975. That is actually the Department of Health and Human Services. So when you go and apply for welfare, you get food stamps, you get put on a USDA program, you go in for medical services, you're getting vaccinated you're enjoining with the depopulation program that you took in place in 1974. So that's another reason for the um, health care program. Absolutely. That is Auschwitz. When you look at the mechanism that that's employing, it's getting everybody into that firing squad or the gas chamber, but it's in a quiet manner because everybody's going to rush off to the hospital. Those hospitals are there to kill you. And that's what we have yeah. in this. Oh, my. Now, what um, y'all are doing with the, with the attorneys and everything as far as the human trafficking and even with the genocide, does this have... Does this tie in with what Karen Hudis is doing, or, you know, that she's been working on as far as the banking and the World Bank no. situation and everything? No. He's there to, to present an illusion of something else. And, it, and it's the same as that OPP thing, um, quote, we the people coming in, that attorney. They're getting yeah. people to align with the same system that's harming you already. They're getting people to trust that system. She's saying, oh, they're admitting that they're corrupt. They're admitting that there's discrepancies. They're, they're going to be the nice guy and come back in and save you. Congress, your Congress, the Congress, the United States House and Rep House of Representatives and the United States Senate is the one directing your genocide and the one now telling you that they'll fix it. That is the same exact criminal. Do not buy into those things. They have a lot of agents out there. Um, who was it? It was uh, the, the one who has the CAFR reports. Uh, Walter Burian. 
uh, back in 800,000 agents employed by this system without a title, without a department. They just get paychecks to go out and promote bullshit to you. That's their function as human agents or signet agents or whatever agent they are. But that's their function is to go hold your hand and tell you how good their government is or to hold your hand and, and tell you to come this way, go get welfare benefits or go to this way, go to that program and everything else. Their function is to deliver you up into the arms of the one that's killing you so that you can be used to discharge congressional bankruptcy. If anybody's trying to pitch to you that Congress is a good guy or that there's a government there willing to protect you, absolutely not. That is an agent. They're a patriot. They're patronizing the Lord God. They're not patronizing God or walking the way of God. And you need to walk away from them because they're Satan. That is your adversary. Anybody who can harm a human being or cause to be harmed a human being is your adversary. You are a human being. Wow. Okay. Well, she, you know, she did say that, um, you know, about the United States not being able to be president over the World Bank if they didn't do something about the corruption and everything that was going on. No. No, on no, their behalf. Okay. When you look at the structure of the banking industry, and, I, and I'll yes. give you an example. In 1917, Charles Lindbergh came in to Congress on the, on the House floor, and he pointed out J.P. Morgan's the law firm, and he said, that law firm over there is corrupt as hell, and he pointed out a whole bunch of House of Representatives members, and he said, you're corrupt, you're corrupt, you're corrupt, you're corrupt, you're corrupt, and I'm impeaching you. And he did this on the House floor in 1917, his report to Congress. Immediately thereafter, they kidnapped him, his son, and they murdered Charles Lindbergh's son to get him to shut up. Now, when J.P. Morgan came back in as the bank, did anybody notice that they're a law firm? Absolutely not. No. That's the same corrupt organization that has ever been. And so when you see the, the Department of Justice come in and, and find J.P. Morgan as a bank, finding mm-hmm. each other. J.P. Morgan is directly under Congress. That is who's preying on you. When you, it, it would be like you and I. If we entered into a criminal enterprise and, and say you and I were going out and we were just uh, nicely killing the neighbors, right, one after another and everything else, well, then I look yeah. at you and I say, well, I'm going to fine you a, a million dollars because you just murdered that guy over there. And you would shake my hand and say, okay, yeah, let's make that deal. Do you pay me a million dollars? And then we walk down the road and we kill some more people. And then you say, well, I'm going to find you a million dollars. And we shake hands, you know, and, and I get cut back from that and you get cut back from that. What does that do to stop us from murdering people? Nothing. No, nothing. That encourages us to do it. Well, right. some people. But That's that an encouragement to do it. Right. That is the established criminal enterprise. That is what Congress is doing and what it has been doing throughout its history since the 1600s. Oh, boy. And they're continuing to do it. Until now. Now they're the surety and they're, they're now cannibalizing each other. This last week, um, uh, let's see, and I'll get some news up here. I wasn't uh, prepared yet. Um, mm-hmm. House was under fire, it looks like. Uh, Walmart asked customers to donate food to its needy employees. So here's Congress coming in, and it's saying Walmart's the bad guy, but Congress is the one who put in place the federal mandate for the minimum wage. Congress is the one that's keeping you in the situation that you're in. It points the finger at Walmart. It's going to sue Walmart and cash in on that. But again, it's the same corporate structure since 1929 Geneva Convention. Um, Representative Trey Radel gets probation for cooking, but he to seek treatment. That's one of the, um, uh, he's a representative from Florida, a Republican representative from Florida, 
Now, he pled guilty to that, but he is a fall guy. Okay, before this, he could not be charged. Virginia State Senator Craig B. Condition and Proof. Now, this senator, they had a uh, human go in there, and his son tried to kill him, and then his son committed suicide during this incident against the senator. So what they're doing is trying to tell him to shut up. And uh, they did that by killing his son, just like they did to, um, you go back to history, Charles Lindbergh, and then there was, um, uh, oh, gosh, I'll remember it in a minute. They tried yeah, that's right, take your time. Um, this week in the news, the Pentagon, the Pentagon blows $8.5 trillion, while at the same time they're putting their troops on rations. This summer they were rationing Marines, Navy, uh, military on the ground and saying they couldn't afford to feed them. Well, a report this week is saying that the Pentagon's been taking $8.5 trillion off the top and the attorneys are pocketing those money while they're telling the military that they're broke. Now, that's terrible. Now, does that also tie in with the um, the military generals that were fired? Um, what was um, the military commanders that were fired when they were closing the um, the government? I guess when they had the government shut down. Yeah, they were shifting everything around. Well, during that time, I think there was nine officers that they got in that one. They also took out the um, head of the CIA, one of the heads of the CIA, which was new to it. He had been grooming a Japanese security company with bribes, which is their function. That's their function with the CIA. They're supposed to be over there doing this. Well, they ended up charging him for that and taking him out. And, again, they got um, the uh, former head of the FBI, Robert, uh, I can't remember his last name. It was just a month and a half ago or so. Um, he retired. They went after his retirement. So he had a whole bunch of ethics violations and everything else. But that's the function. That's what they have to do now to discharge congressional bankruptcy. They have to take each other in the shoot. They have to charge each other with all these, these false crimes. They have to charge each other with, you know, think about it for a minute. With that attorney that's saying he's a serial bank robber, the average pay yeah. for an attorney $300 an hour. Why would he be out robbing banks? Yeah, how about it? You right. have no reason you know, to. Right. But, like I said, whatever floats their boat, they're going to be held accountable for human trafficking. I don't care what they do to each other to generate those revenues because the United States is supposed to be on general welfare. You are supposed to be on general welfare. And if it takes putting a, an attorney in prison, good on them. Or harming him. That attorney that they charge with serial bank robbery. Um, they said the state police shot him in both legs first. Now, that's the action of what the birth certificate is. Since 1929, Geneva Convention, they said that you're being held in the holding corporation, but when you're birthed, uh, they're taking out a bottomly bond on your vessel. Now, a bottomly bond says that if they find a vessel, they can take loans on that vessel in order to repair the vessel. That's where diagnosis comes in. So if that attorney that was shot in both legs, before this, he was an attorney with an oath of allegiance to the bar. But because he was injured, he's been born in a hospital, just like any other infant, as of the 1929 Geneva Convention, which was the most amazing thing for me to see, is for me to see them injuring him so that they could cash in on the back end, just like they do to every other human, but now it's the attorney in the shoot. Mm. Now, do you think, you heard about the, um, I believe it was the senator and his son, or the congressman and his son, and I don't remember exactly, one was killed. Right. Thanks. It's, yes. Uh, a week and a half ago. That looked like MKUltra or the, uh, the Manchurian studies because his son, out of the blue, is attacking his dad with a knife and stabbing his dad. And then he turned the knife around on himself and killed himself, they said. Now, that sounds like yes. his son was pushed into doing that. And usually what happens is somebody's on the back end and they say, well, you know what, we have pictures of you sexually abusing children. Which one of you is going to be taken out? And then the dad must have chosen the son to have died. 
Otherwise, yeah. that would have This is that. That's how they take out politicians. You know, these politicians are predators of humankind. They rape kids. They they raise elderly. They kill people. And and they have lots and lots and lots and lots of skeletons in their closets. So at the time that they need to be politically cannibalized, there is a lot of stuff there for them by which to do so. And we saw that years ago with Larry Craig. Larry Craig was going to come out against uh, Congress, the House of Representatives and Senate, and talk about all the corrupt activity. Well, they got to him first, and that's that story of the uh, politician they found in an airport bathroom wiggling his hand under the bathroom stall in anticipation for perverted sex. That's the quickest way to take out a male politician is to call him a pervert or to say he's some kind of a sexual abuser or freak in some way. And that, at that time, the, the citizens won't ever listen to him talk about corruption or anything else. That is political cannibalism. And that is what you're saying in the media. Now the mainstream media is covering all of these things. Yeah, so also that they can keep or continue to get their new world order. Well, no, they're taking each other out because they can't, they don't have any more funding. And the, mm. what we came in on is the twenty uh, Foreign Sovereign Immunity Act, 28 U.S.C. 97, which says that if they're operating under acts of commerce and private acts, they don't have any sovereignty or immunity. Well, I'm only mm. acting under the law, so I'm a sovereign state. They have never been acting under the public law because they're under uniform commercial code. That is a conglomeration of nothing but private action and acts of commerce. No matter what, they never had immunity. They never had sovereignty, but nobody ever held them accountable before. Well, it's about time that they are being held accountable. Absolutely. It's been long well, overdue. And that's what we're witnessing now. It's like we're walking right through Revelation. And and I can read it as we went along. I can read it page by page by page by page. And you can see the the breaking of the seals. And you can see uh, Babel started falling falling down. And and when you go back into the history of Uniform Commercial Code, just prior to it being called UCC, it was known as the Negotiable Instrument Act. Well, just before that, it was called the Law Merchant. Uh, in Revelation 18, it says when this fails, and nobody's purchasing all these concepts. Everybody stops purchasing all these crap things from the attorney. That's when Babel falls. That's when the law merchants are wailing. Yes. Now, you know, some people would say that if you look at the um, Prodigals of Zion, I believe, that this has all been, you know, written down as part of their plan, that they've had this planned out, Absolutely. that these things were going to take place. Absolutely. And and what we had to do, because um, I've been doing this for about 14 years, we gained it mm-hmm. probably almost 10 years ago now and put it into play because we're at that time we were just a bunch of game theorists. Uh, we're all psychologists, you know, you name it, uh, military, former military, whatever else. Well, we put this yes. act into play up until this point in time. And so we knew back then that by 2038 was their time frame by which to perpetrate the amount of genocide to get the global populace down to 500 million. And that was in the directives back in the 1960s when they were still maintaining under the, uh, the guise of Franklin Bank. That went into what you know as the Franklin scandal. That didn't get a lot of uh, attention as the politicians were out as sexual abusers and everything else. Because at that time, they were still controlling the media. Now, mm-hmm. when we, that was one of our first things that we had to do was cut off their funding. So the first thing that I allowed to happen to me was go ahead and pray on me. Pray on me, please. I'm coming in as a female. I want you to pray on me, and, and they did. I never invited them to, but you know what I mean. I just entered into their realm, and I knew they were going to abuse me. We evidence that they are not protecting females under reservation. They're not protecting females under feminism. They're not protecting females, children, or males in any way, shape, or form. And at that time, we had the evidence in our hands by which to cut off their funding. And that happened March 8th of last year. 
Yeah, we um, had a caller that was on one. Well, actually, she was a guest earlier this week, and she was talking about all of the injustice and the rapes and everything that are allowed in the military. Absolutely, and and a lot of that is the shock doctrine. In order to um, manipulate the human being and to make it go down on its knees, you have to traumatize it. And the greatest trauma they know is the same gender rape. So they'll have females that are raping females and they'll have males that are raping males. And when that occurs, the, the victim males and females are absolutely traumatized more so than if they were raped by the other genders, the opposite gender. And at that point in time, they can be manipulated in various manners, especially throughout the military. You, you know, if you, if you combine two different shock doctrines, one is boot camp and one is sexual abuse of uh, a military personnel, then that's double that you're compounding onto that victim. And at that point in time, that victim is going to be easily, very easily manipulated like a, like, like modeling play. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's sad that the military is allowing this and then they're allowing these abuse, the abused soldiers out without them getting the help that they need, but also to allow the rapists out and knowing that they're allowing these rapists out and they're getting full benefits. Right, but that's the only the presentation they're presenting in the mainstream media. Now, the rapists, the ones that are raping people in the military are high-ranking officials in the military, first of all. They're raping the uh, lesser-ranking officials in the military. Those lesser-ranking officials are not going out and raping again. They already have their foundation or their core set in stone. Um, every once in a while you come across a psychopathic female or, or an effeminate male. But on the outside and away from the military, the insurance policy is that the law enforcement, especially detectives, are perpetrating these rapes. They are perpetrating murder against the populace by which to advertise the need for law enforcement. It is not humanity that's raping each other. It is not humanity that's is killing each other. It is not humanity that's raising each other. These are their officers. These are their policies. These are their psychopaths that are doing these things. And we've evidenced that throughout time. Um, I have a, a, a special report on my uh, YouTube channel, Tammy C32, and I simply called it Thomas. And if you go listen to that one, you'll find out what happened to a, a, a man's child. Thomas Earth was um, murdered by uh, Todd Johnson, a police officer, and he was hung in his dad's garage on Father's Day of 2009. And the intention was to get the father to commit suicide because he's got a very, very um, uh, healthy retirement uh, fund at that time that the municipality wanted from him. And if yeah. he would have reacted in the natural fashion, it if he hadn't have been surrounded by us first, and if he would have reacted as he was supposed to, he would have been another suicide statistic. However, we knew what was going on. We were there surrounding him, you know, holding him up. And absolutely, he has been through hell. He found his baby boy in his garage, hung on Father's Day for the effect that that puts upon his mind. And most of the time, what that would have resulted in is his suicide, and the municipality, that county, would have walked away with his retirement account without any anybody questioning anything because in the media that was presented as a suicide. But I have all of the evidence leading up to the murder as well as after the murder showing that that body was drugged and hoisted into that position he did not commit suicide. Well, they're great for, you know, saying that people are committing suicide, that, you know, it seems like that's one of their targeted phrases. They need to put a patent on that. <laughs> no, they need to. Because it ahead seems like they use that line a lot. Well, um, there's also a report from this summer. Um, just one second, I'll get it up. Uh, okay. okay. Sorry about that. It was such a profound article that was written by 
uh, it was in the um, CBS local in Chicago this year by a state representative that came in, and I just, at that time, I was crying so hard to see what she was actually um, saying to the sheeple. She wants everybody to wake up, and um, yeah. it was a major report that didn't get a lot of runtime because a lot of people are saying, oh, that can happen in my country. But um, mm-hmm. it in chicago.cbslocal.com, which is a Chicago um, uh, reporting source. Now, the mm-hmm. headline is, quote, state reps. Maybe the police are killing some of these kids. And this was written on July 20th, 2013, and I'll read the report. In Chicago on CBS, quote, an Illinois state representative has publicly raised the possibility that Chicago police officers might be the ones responsible for the unsolved murders of black youth in Chicago. State Representative yeah. Monique Davis, Democrat of Chicago, was interviewed about Chicago Crime Tuesday on WCHB AM in Detroit. Quote, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you what some suspicions have been made and people have whispered to me. They're not sure that black people are shooting all of these children, David said. There's some suspicion, and I don't want to spread this, but I'm just going to tell you what I've been hearing. They suspect maybe the police are killing some of these kids. Now, throughout my walk, throughout all of this time, I can guarantee you that, yes, the police are killing those kids. You have to get your kids out of public school, and you have to keep an eye on your kids and stop, stop, stop calling 911. If there is an intruder and you are in fear of your life and safety, shoot them. You don't want yeah, to but you know that people. shooting only works for some people. It doesn't well, work for everyone. Right, but and and a lot of people are still indoctrinated to believe that the television is worth the life of a human being, or their their computer is worth the life of a human being. I'm not saying shoot somebody if they're trying to steal something from you, like a television or a computer or or even your right. car. That car right. cannot supersede the value of a human being and everybody needs to get back to reality here but stop calling the cops that's inviting them into your neighborhood stop calling mm-hmm. the red cross you have a natural disaster this is called geoengineering if you want to read about the funding for natural disasters go to grants.gov the government the congress is Funding natural disasters, and you can find all of it under development grants under each department of the military. Now, this comes all the way from the 1947 National Security Act. The nations are corporations. It's their security they're, they're worried about. And in 1974, Henry Kissinger came in and he said, for the furtherance of national security, the population should be the highest priority. Yeah. At that point, in the uh, that is Memorandum 200 to the National Security Council. You can read about it anywhere. Um, just Google that. And what had happened is that was the establishment of the Department of Health and Human Services. And please, please, everybody thinks they need help, maybe food stamps or cash assistance, when you go to that thing, that is the depopulation program. That thing is there to kill you. If you go ask it for things, it's going to kill you. If you stay away from it, it doesn't know about you. Don't volunteer to be killed. Well, that's good advice. Especially, but then how does a person make it in these times without assistance? If, we help you know, Talk to me. If you're in dire need, contact us. We help each other. We find a way. We always find a way. That is our requirement at Humanity. If you know of a homeless person, help them. Move them in with you. That's what Jesus is teaching. Don't think about your uh, needs. Oh, my gosh, I can't get a manicure this week. You need to be protecting each other because that's what it comes down to. Congress is preying on you. Your government is hunting you. That's what Boy Scouts are. That's what Girl Scouts are. Those are hunting. Scouting needs to prey on something. 
talent scouts, football scouts, acting scouts, those are predators. These things are preying on you and the baby, and you need to stop engaging with it because you're yeah. allowing it to on you. But if you enter back into community, if you get back with each other and stop maintaining that secular human being away from each other, divided and conquered, and you get back together, everybody's safe at that point. They can't prey on you unless yes. you're consented to be preyed on. And part of that yes. is patronizing. That is so true. Wow. I just want it to end. I just want it to end. We've had enough. Yes. Humanity cannot sit, sustain any longer. We cannot sustain this. Our population since the 1980s has been dwindling by 3 million a year. It hasn't been increasing. It hasn't been in stasis. We've been dwindling by 3 million a year, and we need to stop this now and Stop being divided. Stop looking at somebody else like they're a different religion, culture. Those are characteristics. That has nothing to do with the being of a human being. Those are concepts that you're buying into. Color is a concept. When you look at the etymology just on gender alone, gender, mm-hmm. the etymological definition of gender is, quote, kind, sort, class, from old French gender, from stem of Latin genus, meaning race, stock, family, kind, rank, order, or species. That's what the word gender means. When you're separated, calling yourself man and woman and male and female, you are separating into a different stock, into a different species or a race. And it's the same thing when they separate us with color. Color is a characteristic. It's not a biology. It's a concept. And as I said the other night, now we have been human trafficked since the inception of politics. And so when we were on the equator, which is our home, that's where we were originally, then they started shipping us from place to place. And it doesn't matter what color you are, everybody needs to listen very carefully here because during that shipping or commerce and navigation is what they called it, and you can read about this in the Dictionary of Commerce and Navigation, they ship people to the north and to the south of the equator. At that time, one of us doesn't get vitamin D from the sunlight, and one of us does. The one that has vitamin D, D turns darker. The one without vitamin D turns lighter. That's all that is. We are all the same race called human beings. There is no definition of color. That is a concept that's a fictional creation of attorneys by which to divide and conquer human beings and perpetrate genocide against our race. Gay is a characteristic. Homosexuality is a characteristic. It is not a biological defect. Everybody needs to realize these things and how separate they've been by which to prey on us. If we allow ourselves to be separated, we're allowing ourselves to be pushed to the edge of a herd, and that's what a predator relies on. It picks off the little ones on the edge of the herd. When you secularize yourself into females or classes of males or classes of religious indoctrination or classes of culture, you're ending up putting yourself on the edge of the herd by which the predator can pick you off. That's what that is there for. That is why they taught you concepts. And this says yes. in Genesis, if you go back to the Wycliffe edition, the original translation out of Greek, you read the first book of Genesis. It says that you, God, were given a whole bunch of concepts that you took. You, God, you are God. And the Lord God came in and fed you a bunch of crap. You believed it. And... Since that time, you have not been walking or acting as to God because you're reliant on another authority. You are allowing somebody else to represent you. And that's it's repeated again in 1 Corinthians 6. It says you can only fornicate by giving your body to the Lord God. And you, have, you God, have raised up the Lord God, so shall you raise up us, us up by your own power. And he says this over and over again. First, or Second Corinthians 13. He says, I'm coming to you the third time. 
all you have to realize is that you need to know thyself. That's all this is yeah. about. Know thyself. Know that you are God. Stop allowing somebody else to represent you. Stop garnering that attorney. Stop praying to Congress. Stop worshiping a freaking flag. Stop worshiping a dollar bill. Stop worshiping things and look around you and realize what you are and who you are. You are God. Start acting like it. Excuse me for a moment, Tammy. I, I hate to cut you short. Um, will you be able to go into overtime with us? Um, I know that the phone's about to die. Um, do you want me to come back in a, in about half an hour? I just have to put it on the charger real quick. Or we can do this another um, time. I've been small night. If you want to come on the show, we can finish up on leaving the farm. Oh, okay. That would be great. Um, we have 13 minutes left. Um, I'm going to let Dr. Yapa speak with you for a moment. And everyone that's been on the phone, that's been on the lines, that has been holding and waiting, I'm sorry that we weren't able to take your questions or comments. Um, Yapa, Dr. Yapa Bay? Yes, hi, Antoinette. Hi. Hello. Hi to the guests. Um, this is Tammy Pepperman. Hi, Ms. Pepperman. How are you tonight? Good. How are you? I'm marvelous. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. You know, it's good to hear someone else that has a freaking clue out here. Not enough of us, you know. Right. Thank um, you. The for reason, um, the reason um, Antoinette wanted to bring me on is because everybody that's listening now, if you happen to have a Booth mobile phone, I need to mention this on Wednesday show when I go on air. Uh, contrary to popular belief, you do not get unlimited calls with Booth Mobile. You get a two-hour limit, and every two hours you're cut off. So if they're going into overtime, you would want to hang up now and call back before you're kicked off the phone with your booth because you will get your two-hour limit. Okay, I'm having a very difficult time. Somebody's breaking up. Is it me? I have plenty of signal bars. Uh, oh, Anson, I just wanted me to interact with you momentarily because she happens to have booth, and she did not want her booth phone to cut her off at 8 o'clock, after which time she would not be able to call back in. Oh. <laughs> it's ridiculous what they do. calling in now, and everyone else should call in now because on the hour, if you've been listening for two hours on a Booth mobile phone, you will get kicked off here, and when you call back, you will get a recording that says, uh, thank you for calling Blog Talk Radio. There are no shows scheduled for the next 24 hours. Hello, yes, I'm back. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm going back on mute. It was nice to meet you. I'm still listening. Okay. Um. What's happening? Uh-huh. I'm still here. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't want the call to drop because <laughs> I was calling in through my cell phone, and it only goes for. I'm sure y'all have explained it to you. Oh, yeah. Just... Pardon me. They're just making sure that everything's completely geared towards obsolescence. You know, they they make phones to break, and they make processes to to fail, and they make. Uh, technology to to irritate and and that's that's part of this other weapon, you know. It just all of yes. these things compounding. It's just stress. It can't be easy. You got to re- rely on somebody. Call up your customer service or your human resource department. But don't look at that word or anything. Don't realize you're a human resource for anybody. You know, it, it's just so yes. sick what they've done. They've just twisted everything and and maintained such exorbitant amounts of revenue derived from this human trafficking. That's what it is every time that you're altered of your heading, every time that there's there's an advertisement thrown in your face, and every time there's another uh, appeal for donations, and every time there's another program that they put into place to combat what's happening to you, they're the ones who would think that happened to you. That program is intended to embezzle money out of the treasury, Attorneys are going to pocket those monies. Stop relying on them. Start relying on ourselves and each other and realize what they're doing. And once you do that, it's just the most amazing um, 
freedom, absolute freedom. You know, I haven't been in their system for over four years. I don't interact with it. I don't like advertisements. I bitch about advertisements constantly because that's one of the first ways and means of garnering the female specifically within the action of hearts and minds because they're always offering us something else. Let me help you, honey. I got food stamps. Let me help you, honey. I have uh, medical insurance, free daycare over here, free housing over here, uh, clothing supplements, uh, you name it. That is the action of hearts and minds, and they employ that during wartime in order to garner the female over to their political side. It's called bringing her on point, and that is part of the action of low-intensity conflict. You never realize you are in a war. They are the ones that are controlling the inflation rate and making that food you need so expensive. Yes. They are the one that is federally subsidizing daycare so that the daycare amount now costs you $1,000 a week. Nobody can afford to pay that. That's because of Congress when they came in and subsidized daycare. When I was younger, I could babysit for 50 cents an hour. By the time yeah. I became an adult and, and I saw what this system is, here's Congress subsidizing it, forcing it into the realm of $1,000 a week. And, and, and they put in place all of these barriers to ensure through fourth-generation warfare, that you have to rely on their system. But instead of doing that, get back into communities. If you really need help, get a hold of me. We, we can run a fundraiser. We can do whatever we need to help. Just let us know how to help. And, and especially get back with humanity. Stop relying on that you, thing. That you have a podcast per- number. I'm sorry. I do. Um, Skype is Hopperman. Uh, anybody can Skype me, email me, TammyKey23 at Hotmail.com. I'm on YouTube, TammyKey32. I'm over on Facebook. And, um, you know, usually after the first contact or so, I'll give out my phone number too. Um, otherwise, my phone r- r- rings off the hook. But, and, you know, other people uh, can get a hold of me. If, if you know Antoinette, Antoinette can get a hold of me or anything else. But, but we all need to just, be together. We can't be secular anymore because that's how they divide and conquer. When we're not secular, when we are one and we're living as one and saying that we're one, that's when it ends and they no longer have any control. Yes, yeah, so you said you're doing a show tomorrow um, from leaving the farm. Yes, yeah, over on Revolution um, Radio. Yeah, and that, the that one. 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, let me go get the number real quick because anybody can call in as well. Okay, because we have a lot of people that are on the line that wanted to talk to you, so, you know, okay, perhaps yes, they'll... Tomorrow. That'll be a Pardon? great show. Yeah, anytime yeah, so. we can open up the lines and just uh, really go to town. Um, I can also, if anybody needs to... You know, Patty's offered us these changing times between Thursdays and Sunday nights. So if anybody wants to throw together a show, we can do that too. Um, anytime that we need to get together. Patty's just amazing and helpful yes, for what we're doing. The number for tomorrow night, I'm on Studio B at Revolution Radio. And you can either listen in on the computer, which is at freedomslips.com. F R E E D O M S L I P S dot com, and just click on Studio B, um, the play button on Studio B, or you can call in at three one zero four two one four zero five three. And again, that number is only for Studio B tomorrow night between six and eight p.m. Or I have another show on Thursdays on the same radio station from uh, 8 to 10 p.m. Again, on Studio B on Thursdays. But any time um, I invite anybody to call in because that's what we're here for. Leaving the farm is about leaving the farm. It's not about, you know, uh, talking about just, I don't do rumors and things like that, just like you guys. And um, we just, we're here so that we can get everybody off the farm at the same time. That way we're not being preyed on and we're no longer yeah. victims of, of corporations or corporate policy. 
Yes, and you know you. I know you said last time leaving the farm is leaving the plantation. Yeah, getting off the plantation. Right, and that, that was the origins, and and it was so sad to see that we can go throughout time, and everybody can be turned against each other, and and consider even for a moment that human beings would allow slavery of another human being. That was Congress. Yes. Yes. The lawmakers, the lawmakers came in and said it was legal to hold slaves. That was not you and I. That was Congress right. itself. Man, Congress pointed the fingers at you and I and said, you guys are doing it. You guys are doing it. When you go back into the history of the KKK, KKK that was the Democrat who introduced the KKK in the 1920s and brought it to the forefront. And then it was yeah. the same Democrat yeah. affirmative action in the 1960s. Well, because we're not racist, we don't harm each other, all of those monies go, of course, to congressional pockets, attorney pockets, time after time after time after time. And it's just the same thing they did with sexism in the 60s. Um, they came in at one point in time and said, I, I don't have the right to vote because I'm a female. That was Congress who made it illegal for me to vote. And then Congress who pointed the fingers at all the males and said, you did it, you did it, you did it, you did it. And we were blaming each other with an action of sexism. Not only do we have feminism in play and racism, and we've got sexism, we've got uh, uh, Catholicism, Judaism at all times, Islamism. They use these political tools against us by which to redistribute our assets and pit us against each other. And enough is enough is enough. I've had enough. These monsters need to be put in Gitmo. They need to be shipped off away from human beings and, and left to their own devices. They love litigating. They like playing these games. They love cannibalizing each other. Go ahead and do that elsewhere, but you're not going to do it around human beings any longer. Never again. And, and it's written in Revelation. You know, everybody needs to realize this is all written in Revelation. The snake is now eating its own tail as it cannibalizes itself. Two delegated its authority. The federal government came in and gave national states in 1802 through the Act of Enablement the same um, uh, status as it had, except for it's been raising it, too. If you look throughout time, when they started giving each county land and each state land and setting up these uh, state constitutions in 1802, they came in and said, well, you get that, 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 that. The federal state had given all these uh, national states all of these privileges and everything else. Well, then they came right back in in 1974 with the Reclamation Act, and they've been reclaiming all of that stuff. The federal government has been raising the national state since 1974, and the national state's not even seen this. You know, it wasn't just human beings that were preyed on by Congress. It's been everybody, including corporations, that have been raised and preyed on by the federal government, and they've been raising everything. When we got into the financial aspects years ago, they have actually been embezzling 90%. Each state is hardly yeah. getting any. Each county is hardly getting anything. Each sheriff, each law enforcement agency, each FBI field office, each CIA office, they're hardly getting anything. The feds are taking 90% of everything and then pointing the finger at you and I or pointing the finger at Walmart, pointing the finger at... Department of Justice pointing the finger elsewhere, but not at itself. And it's time now to turn it around and look at the actual criminal enterprise, and that has always been Congress. And ironically, that word, Congress, means with transgression. That thing is your transgressor. Well, so they're busy. Hello? Uh oh, it was you. Oh, okay. I was going to say, did it drop? Can you hear me? Well, well so I'm and Congress is still doing the same thing. I don't hear anything now. Oh so, shoot! I that dropped it. Like she said, it was going to. Can you hear me now? Uh, Hello. I don't know. Maybe I'm on mute or something. No. No. Maybe it's gone. No, I'm still here. Well, maybe uh, you forgot to 
hang up and call back at the end of two hours. Okay, okay, can you hear me now? now? I can hear you all alone. I don't hear your guest anymore. Yeah. Um. Oh, boy, I don't know what happened. That was strange. That's why I said, okay, well, if you can't hear me through the cell phone, let me hear it and call, use that. You know, I tied the phone calls in. Um. Oh, boy. Well, I think her call. If she were to call back, she can't get. Back yeah, through. her call she dropped. Her but remember, she said it was dying. Her phone was dying. Yeah, she had to put it on the charger. Yeah. Show anyway. Probably yeah. Yeah, yeah and this eleven o two. Yeah. Well, everyone, please check um, Tammy Pepperman out tomorrow night on her show, leaving on Revolution Radio. And she gave her information, and I'm sorry that we couldn't take any calls tonight. But as she said, you know, that her show tomorrow night and Thursday night, that they will be able to take calls. And she, you know, also gave you contact information. So please get in touch with her that way. And I thank everyone for coming, and have a good night. Bye. Have a good night, folks. Thank you for coming.